It is time to bring March Madness 2019 to its conclusion with seven 3D printers. And since these 3D printers are so close to the modern day, there are some additional thoughts that have happened in just the, the past couple of weeks since I recorded the Mega Re-Review. I have some more things to say. So I, that is to say the I that is doing the video now that's a couple of weeks removed from the I that did the recording that you're about to watch, I will be at the end of the video to tell you more about the last two printers that I talked about a couple of weeks back when I recorded this. Confusing? Don't be. You'll understand. Let's just get straight to the reviews. Oh, the Geetech E180. Let's just break it down. Price could be whatever because I never got it to work. I got a couple of prints to work, but they were crap, and then they stopped working, and I actually got two of these 3D printers and I had the same problem with both of them. And like I said in the video, it breaks my heart because I wish that it had been actually functional. But its capability is so near to zero that I just tore them apart for parts. And whenever that drops to zero, yeah, ease of use. Yeah, it was easy to use. It was easy to use to do nothing with. What's that worth, you know? Yeah, absolutely no recommendation. Geetech is is striking out with me. I'm afraid. I'm I'm sorry, guys. The Moose three in one three D printer is interesting. I want to say that this printer is super capable. Now, first of all, its price is not super great, but it's supposed to be a super capable 3D printer. It can do 3D printing, it can do laser etching, it can do routing. However, it's 3D printing jammed up and it's impossible to fix. So goodbye, no 3D printing capability. Its laser etching is difficult to use and doesn't actually do much you'd be better off just printing a sticker and sticking it on whatever you're trying to do and it's routing it actually works as a router and it works fairly well but you know for so far for what i've been doing routing with it's better to use 3d printing the the results are much better now that said i'm keeping it around and keeping it in router format because i kind of one day want to try building circuit boards and it will be capable of doing that but overall its capability score is different than a 3D printer because it's not a 3D printer the way that I'm using it, but not bad. And it's ease of use. It's got great software. It's got great user interface. And so its ease of use is nice and high up there, but its ease of use takes a hit because if you want to change out the head and try the etcher or something like that, you've got to unscrew a lot of screws and re-screw them back in and throw off calibration and it's frustrating and it's that the hardware side of it is the reason why the ease of use score is not higher. I'd like to see a 3D printer slash etcher slash router that is actually easy to use. The Moose 3-in-1 is not it. That said, I'm keeping mine around and using it for a very specific purpose, and I'm happy to have it, but I don't know if I give it a recommendation. <music> When I reviewed the CR-10S, it was at a very turbulent time for Creality. There was a whole open source frustration debacle going on, which has mostly blown over at this point. And in fact, Creality has gone the other way and they are embracing open source. And so that's super cool. But even at the time, I said the CR-10S is a step above the CR-10 and well worth it. A little bit more expensive, but because of its onboard sensors and what it does, it is slightly more capable and slightly easier to use. Still, I recommend the JG Aurora A5 over the CR-10S for a lot of reasons, but it is a good printer, and I pretty much stick by what I said at the time about it. You know what it's like. You see a cool new filament and you want to try it out, but as you're hovering over that buy button, you remember the last three spools of fancy filament that you bought, used for that one thing, and haven't used since. You could join one of those monthly filament subscription boxes and maybe get one or two of the cool ones, but you'll also be buried in more samples than you can use, not to mention the 
seriously, red PLA? It sounds like you need the 3D Printing Professor Filament of the Month Club. Each month you'll receive a generous coil of just the good stuff. Enough to work with it, but not so much that you'll feel guilty later. Thanks, 3D Printing Professor. Wait, that's me. Join the Filament of the Month Club today. The Start 3D Printer or the Tron XY100, same thing, does not get a recommendation from me. Sure, its price is super high and its ease of use is super low because it's a, it's a kit that you have to build. And then its capability, it has a very, very small build plate. It has a single nozzle and it's not even a heated build plate. Yeah, its capability is ridiculous ridiculously low. I said at the time maybe this would be a good place to start if you want a kit and you just want the parts. But the thing is they're selling it as this is a 3D printer for kids to start with and you need an electrical engineer to really make it worth it. That gap is not very good. I don't see them selling many more of these around nowadays and that's probably for the best. There are better 3D printers out there. No recommendation on the start I'm afraid. The M3D Micro is a 3D printer that a lot of people thought I should have been harder on, but that's mostly because M3D ticked off a lot of people by just not delivering on their fundraising promises. Now, they didn't have to, but they still have the gall to be in business and try to sell to new customers. The thing is the M3D Micro, when looked at objectively, is still not a 3D printer I can recommend. I can say that for sure. It's too expensive. It's more expensive than a Mini and it's actually smaller than a Mini and less capable. And that capability takes a further hit from the fact that it can't print accurately. Even after weeks and weeks of trying to calibrate it, it was still printing ovals. That's not good at all. Its ease of use is kind of a weird one. You have to keep it plugged in. It's a headless 3D printer. So it's got good ease of use from a good user interface, but then it's tied to your computer. It is small enough to sit on your desk, so it's not obtrusive. But at the time, the nicest thing that I could say about it was that it was a low power consumption 3D printer. And I guess that's really all I can still say about it. No recommendation from this one. The Monoprice Select Mini V3. Let's break it down. More expensive than the V2. About equally capable. However, its ease of use took a slight bump because it's a color touchscreen now, which is super cool. And they have auto bed leveling, or rather bed leveling detection and correction with your print. Now, there was a small problem with the print bed in that nothing would stick to it. <laughs> Whatever they put on my print bed, it wasn't a good print bed. But I fixed that because it is a removable print bed by just spraying it with hairspray. And now it works just fine. And I'm using that printer almost every day. It's good. But would I recommend it over the V2? <sighs> Not really. Actually, I still kind of like the V2 better as a recommended 3D printer. While I'm happy to have the V3, the V2 does have a problem with that fix that you have to do. But that fix is actually a really good feeling and it's not hard to do. So I, I hate not being able to recommend the V3, but I don't think that the additional price is worth the bump in ease of use that it provides. So go with a V2 if you're thinking about the Monoprice Select Mini. However, there is another option coming soon in this re-review. We're coming up on the modern day and I did a review of the Ender 3 versus the F192 from Wido. It wasn't a fair comparison because it really was apples and oranges, two different ends of the spectrum. Basically, I didn't have anything to say about the Ender 3. It gets a recommendation from me because it's a good printer, it works, it does what it's supposed to, and its price is low. So price is low, capability is slightly lower than the CR10 because it's practically identical to a CR10, just 
a little bit smaller, but it's a good small. It's a small that's actually usable, and ease of use is about the same as a CR-10 because it's bare marlin with exposed wires, and you have to build it to assemble it. Overall, though, I think that it's it's a good printer, and it's, it's functional, it's usable, and a lot of people are doing great things with it. You wouldn't make a mistake by buying an Ender-3, but there are ones that I would recommend. <music> The F-192, pretty much exactly what I said in that review. It's expensive, but dual nozzles, large build volume. You can vent it to the outside, so that takes care of the Vox problem right there. And uh, overall, I really, really like it, but my biggest complaint is that its slicer is just, it needs a lot of work. Or we need to get Simplify 3D or Cura 2 point whatever working with this thing and I will be so much happier with it. The, the, the slicer is just a slog to get through. But that said, I am using this printer every day now uh, until I get my replicator one fixed again, but it's, it's good. It's a good printer. Does it get a recommendation from me? In certain cases, yes, but I do wish it were more like the next printer. <laughs> Mana Price Voxel or Flash Forge Adventure 3. Okay, yes, it is twice as expensive as a Mini, twice as expensive as a CR10, but its enclosure is beautiful. Its build volume is, okay, about half the size of a CR10, but where it really, really shines is in ease of use. Holy smokes, between the Wi-Fi on this thing and the absolutely beautiful interface, the web printing that it can do, just so many things about this printer makes it punching so hard above its weight. I highly, highly recommend. This is my number one recommended printer if you're new into 3D printing because it takes that quantum leap in ease of use that I can absolutely recommend to everyone again its capability takes a hit because of its size but its take capability goes back up because of its enclosure and it's just absolutely marvelous honestly i wish all printers were like the monoprice voxel just you know bigger and dual nozzles and and everything else that i wanted but i absolutely love and recommend I recommend it so much, it's on 3DP Professor slash shop. Looky what I get to find a home for here real soon. But I told you that I had some more thoughts about the WeDo F192 and the Monoprice Voxel slash Adventure 3 3D printer. So about the flat F192, you'll notice it's not here right now. I've replaced it with the JG Aurora. I was so dissatisfied with the F192 slicer, their WeBuilder slicer, that I kept pressing on their support and saying, hey, help me fix it. And it turned out that they had somehow hardware locked their machine so that you could only slice models using their slicer. Yes, they had a Cura, but it didn't work. Yes, they had a Simplify 3D profile, but it didn't work. And so after pressing them, they said, well, fine, here. Here is a new firmware for your machine. Flash the firmware on there, and it'll print with all of them. Okay, cool. Flash it on there. It printed with none of them. I, and it, it's my own fault. I pushed. I should have just, if I had just been happy with it the way that it was, then great. But as it is, uh, hopefully they can get me a firmware and roll it back. But I feel like I've, I've overstayed my welcome with them, and it's just frustrating. It's a great machine. It's a well built machine and I don't want it to just sit there fallow without being able to print anything. I wonder if I could get a duet board and put it in there and have that work. Hmm. Now also about the Adventure 3 slash Monoprice Voxel. You'll notice it's not here either even though I unboxed it and put it here because at the end of that video it was an unboxing video which is a good thing because if it were a getting a first print out of it video, the first print was so fragile, it broke apart in my hand. I was getting super under extrusion, super stepper stutters from them, and I don't know why. And the problem is 
they don't have the nozzles anywhere for anybody to buy. I, 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 don't, I don't understand why, but we can't buy the nozzles yet. And it sounds like at least the people at Monoprice are really working on it. Flashforge sounds like they're working on it as well. Flashforge has to be the one to supply them, so I hope that they will provide them for us. I did manage to get a replacement nozzle but only when I purchased the entire extruder head, which only cost $22 and, and wasn't that expensive, but still, that's, that's a lot of extra stuff that I have. So I'm going to tear them apart so that you guys can see what's on the inside of them so that if FlashForge doesn't provide us with the parts, maybe we can. The thing is, my experience with the F192 and my experience with the Adventure really makes a strong case for open source 3D printers because you wouldn't have this problem with an open source 3D printer, one that uses off-the-shelf parts that you could buy and get anywhere or that you could jerry-rig a solution to. Having to rely on FlashForge and we do for my solutions has really kind of been a problem so far. And it breaks my heart because I've said this over and over again. I just said it. I love the interface on the FlashForge and I want to see more 3D printers set up like that. I'm, I'm confident that I'm going to get the Adventure 3 printing again. The F192, maybe. Hopefully, we do will help me on that one, but it's, it's, I, I'm in their hands. Those are my thoughts on all of these 3D printers. Thank you for letting me ramble on about this and. I hope that you have enjoyed March Mad Mess 2019. Didn't expect that to happen, but let's see what happens in 2020. Whoa. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.